The Independent National Electoral Commission is once again urged to extend the deadline for the party primaries ahead of the 2023 elections. And over 20 aspirants remain in the All Progressives Congress as several others step down due to several reasons, including Section 84, Subsection 12, which says that public officers must resign before taking part in a party's primary. You're welcome to Plus Politics, and I'm Kofi Bartels. Welcome back. Uh, Northern Group, the Aurewa Youth Consultative Forum, has urged the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, to consider extending the conduct of party primaries ahead of the 2023 general elections. Now, the group noted that the call has become imperative in view of the increasing tension across the country occasioned by banditry. Also, they're citing the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU Strike, and other issues as responsible for their call. Now, INEC provided for parties to conduct their primaries for the nomination of candidates from April 5 to June 3, 2022. It's just around the corner. Also, a human rights organization under the aegis of the Center for Transparency Advocacy has raised concern over the request by the Inter-Party Advisory Council, otherwise known as IPAC, to shift the deadline for political parties to conduct their primaries. They described it as misplaced. Now, IPAC had earlier uh, asked INEC to extend the deadline for the commission. Uh, the commission, rather, had given to political parties. And, of course, like I said, it's just around the corner. Now, what are the pros and cons of, of a call for INEC to extend that deadline? We have joining us, I'm glad to say, tonight on Plus Politics at Chike Chude. He's a political analyst. And... We have Ifeda Yoyanura, who is a political analyst. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us on Plus Politics. So a pleasure to be with you. All right. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on, on, on this call? I mean, the, the deadline is just around the corner. And we have parties uh, are rushing to meet up, you know. Um, is, is it an, a, a right call for INEC to extend its deadline for party primaries? I'll start with you. Um, Chude, what do you say to this? Uh, uh, well, uh, you know, the call came in there some time ago uh, by IPAC, and now uh, this other group you're talking about is uh, also reiterating that call. And uh, my position then, when I make made that call, just I mean, it's the same thing as you know, like right now, and it's a position that aligns with that of uh, INEC, and that is no. Uh, to the call for shifting of uh, the uh, date uh, for parties to hold their primaries. And don't forget that when you're talking about uh, parties now, you're talking about even though that call was made under the platform of uh, IPAC, you know, but uh, it is essentially a call for the APC and the PDP, the two dominant parties in the system, uh, you know, to shift their primaries. And uh, like I said, I align with the position of uh, INEC, which is um, a firm no. Um, INEC gave them uh, this um, dates. INEC, of course, has a lot of uh, you know things to do, and INEC has been able to establish the kind of process that uh, I mean it will take uh, leading up to the uh, 2023 presidential, I mean general election in the country. And the argument of INEC is that essentially, once you do that, once they shift the date then all the other dates that INEC has also earmarked for its own internal processes, administrative processes, will also have to be shifted. And then, of course, don't also forget the argument then, you know, uh, before the Electoral Act was eventually, you know, passed by the National Assembly and sent to the president for assent, INEC had already sounded a note of warning that there was no time anymore and that whatever they needed to do with regards to the electoral law, uh, you know, the Electoral Act, uh, the passage by the National Assembly and the signing by the President should be done quickly to allow INEC to be able to have adequate time to prepare for the elections. And so INEC is saying that once they are able to shift this the date for these primaries, every other thing that INEC has to do would also be shifted and that they do not have 
time on their time on their side. And actually, the election is uh, just um, uh, some months down the corner. And uh, I agree with them absolutely. Look, the politicians knew these dates. They knew the dates before now. And then they, they needed to get their house in order. And even the fund, the excuse they are giving is laughable that they have a lot of internal issues, internal crises that they want to be able to uh, uh, put in order uh, before their primaries. And it is not the responsibility or the business of INEC uh, to give them time to sort out their internal issues. They've always had internal issues. I mean, look at uh, after the 2015, uh, the, 2019, the 2019 election, for instance, there was crisis, the, the post-election crisis within the APC and within the PDP. And they set up various reconciliation committees to go around the country to resolve their differences. If they were not able to resolve these differences from 2019 to the present time, are they asking INEC to give them one more month to be able to do that, something that they have not done in over three years? So it doesn't make sense, and I do not think that INEC has any business accommodating the foibles of the politicians. Hmm. All right. I'll come over to you, Ifedayo Yanirua. Yeah. Are you on the, on the same page with these groups calling for INEC uh, to extend its deadline for parties to conduct and conclude their primaries and internal processes? Well, I think uh, what we should be more concerned about is the position of law. That is in line with the 2022 electoral heart. I will repeat and reenact that of 2010. On this point, the section 84 of section 1 of the said electoral heart, it's so clear that that section states that a political party nominates candidates for elections under this act shall hold primaries for aspirants to hold elective positions and shall be monitored by the commission. Then section 82, subsection 1 also state that every registered political party shall give the commission at least 21 days notice, which of course many of these political parties advise strictly with. And I know to best of my knowledge that they have done that already. Now section 29, subsection one, say that every political party shall not later than 180 days, that is six months, before the date appointed for a general election under this act, submit to the commission in the prescribed, that I, what I mean is prescribed forms, the list of the candidates the party proposed to sponsor at the elections, who must have emerged from valid primaries conducted by political parties. Don't forget, at least 180 days before the date appointed for general election. This is, this is an affirmative position of the law. And as we speak, ANEC has already fixed date of 2023 general election to February 25, 2023 for the presidential and national House of Assembly elections. Meanwhile, these laws have already provided legal framework for regulating the position of the Independent National Electoral Commission over the conduct of elections in Nigeria. Having been empowered by the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria under Section 153 to organize and oversee the conduct of elections in Nigeria. So therefore, as umpire, we all agreed the commission to be I think what is expected of the political actors is to respect the rule of law. And whoever wants to scheme to endeavor to do that within the position of law and stop discouraging the system stop, and stop acting up as if some individuals have a way of manipulating the commission at the expense of our electoral process, that we are all still agitating for to be well and more reformed. Mm. Political parties that are clamoring for INEC to shift date for primaries. It's just as if when we are saying, we are telling coach to shift all post, which of course is a call for. All right. All they right. Have, the, the commission has been empowered by the, by the constitution. We regard them as umpire. We did not discourage them. Whatever they bring on board, binds on all of us.
We are not unaware of what is going on. Gentlemen, today. yes, Ifedayo, Ifedayo, Eyanura, e e thank you very much. Um, I've listened to you, I've listened to Chude. Um, you're sounding like, uh, you know, adjusting election timetables or moving elections forward, changing the dates is sort of a taboo in politics. It's going to sound the death knell as far as democracy in Nigeria is concerned. It's going to be the death of all of us. You know, uh, it's, it's a sacrosanct, something that cannot be touched. But all over the world, in Nigeria, we have examples. Elections have been postponed, gentlemen. You know, dates have been changed before. Um, so is it that it is unknown to us? Is it that it is such a bad thing that cannot be done or what? Will any ch anything change if the parties are calling for, um, you know, some, some, some parties are calling for the dates to be uh, changed and, you know, for more time to allow the parties to put themselves together? I'll come back to you, Achike Chude. Um, INEC, INEC um, has a responsibility, they have a mandate, and uh, their mandate is um, outside of uh, the uh, normally interference of uh, the political parties. And, and so, like I said, the INEC has a lot of challenge. INEC's challenge is to organize elections for the whole of this country, you know, and that is a very big issue. And then also, don't forget that uh, there have been constraints in terms of. Um, uh, you know, release of money to INEC. In most cases, INEC does not have money released to it as and when due. So that causes a lot of constraints by the time money is eventually released to INEC. So INEC takes all of these things into consideration in taking a decision. Yes, the political parties can can uh, can uh, make a request. They have made a request, but uh, it behoves on INEC to consider that request or this the request favorably or unfavorably. And in this case, they have said and they have looked at their own logistical issues and logistical challenges. And they have said they will not be able to accommodate this request by the political parties and that the political parties have a duty to put their house in order. You know, and that is what they expected to do. Because look, the political parties are aware of, especially the dominant political parties. They are the ones in control of the, I mean, in, in, in control of the National Assembly. The, the Senate and the House of Representatives. It is their members that um, were involved in passing the Electoral Act. Uh, you know, the president is a member of one of the political parties, the APC and others. So the politi politicians have an idea, they had an idea about the timelines within which elections are going to be held. And then having, you know, passed the Electoral Act and then, you know, I may came up with a table of events that will lead to the election, which includes the organizing of the primaries also. You know, so it, it, is, it is only reasonable that the political parties from the one would have started the process to make sure that uh, their houses are put in order so that they can organize their, their, their primaries uh, in, in a way that is, uh, in a, I mean, in, in a fair, you know, and uh, transparent manner. And so they are now asking INEC to give them. And my, my argument is that they have had three years to, uh, you know, uh, uh, be able to put their house in order to, you know, sort out some of the crisis that emanated from the 2019 election. If they were not able to do that, why would one extra month given to them by INEC be enough for them? Look, the reality is that elections will hold. The reality is that the political parties will field candidates and will participate in the election. So they don't even need INEC to interfere by extending, by giving them extra time. They know what to do. And once they, they realize that there is no way that INEC is not going to give them that extra time, they will work within the time that they have to ensure that uh, they, they organize their, their primaries properly. And I think they can do it. I think they are just being lazy, you know, asking for extra time. But like, like INEC says, giving you this time would also, you know, distort our table for this, for, for preparation for the election. And I do not think that the politicians should burden INEC with their own problem and then create a different problem for INEC, why INEC is trying to solve their own problem. Yeah, maybe Mr. Chiribi, I'll stay with you before I, I go back to uh, uh, Ifela. Um, you're saying the parties have had enough time. You're saying they've had three years. But if we look at it, in actual fact, they've had only three months, you know, um, March, April, May, and May is still on, two and a half months. Uh, have you not noticed or, you know, sensed, uh, or noticed a sense of 
urgency and, and the hurry to try and get things done because there was really nothing happening while we were all waiting uh, and, um, of course, uh, canvassing that the Electoral Act should be passed and when it was passed, should be signed by Mr. President. There was a lot of drama with that. You both are aware, gentlemen, of all that transpired with the President sending back uh, the, an unsigned document to the National Assembly for deletion or omission of some uh, um, uh, uh, sections. And INEC released yeah. its timetable and, uh, 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 and schedule of activities on February 26, 2022, sir. And if you look at the timetable, the notice of election is for February 28, 2022. The parties had done nothing at that point, gentlemen. If I mean, let's just go back in time. They had done nothing. We didn't even know who, were, who the aspirants were. They were not going around the country. They were not meeting delegates. They were not canvassing for anything. And the parties now have to move from ending of February, March, they have one month. April, they have two months. May, they have three months, to June 3. In fact, the commencement of the primaries is from 4th of April, which is a month ago. Everything see, seems you, you to know, be in a hurry. Know, you see, the issue is this. You have to remember the reasons the party gave to INEC. The major reason the party gave, the parties gave to INEC, and, you know, uh, that propelled them asking INEC for uh, extension, to give them, you know, uh, you know uh, extra time. Or extra month or whatever it is to be able to put their house in order. That is the reason to put their house in order, that they have some divisions, there are so many things that they need to do to settle their internal issues. Their the, the internal issues are not the creation of INEC. INEC has no uh, business with that. And like I'm saying, look, INEC can as well ask for extra time. But then INEC, I mean, there's a mandate, INEC has a mandate to conduct elections as specified by the Constitution. So regardless of when INEC, the, the Electoral Act was signed by the president, INEC will have to begin from that period to make preparations for the election. INEC could as well have said, look, but look, the, 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 the events leading uh, to the signing of uh, the Electoral Act delayed the whole process and all that. So when the Electoral Act was not passed on time, and we need an extra six months to be able to organize an election beyond the time given to them by the Constitution. So why INEC, INEC is not giving that excuse. Why would the parties also give an excuse? Because INEC is not only the political parties that are working against them. INEC is also working against them, and they are not giving any excuses. They are not asking for extension. You know, so this is what I'm trying to say. And besides, the political parties have structures, and that these issues, whatever issues they want to resolve within themselves, are issues that have been there since uh, 2019. They had a duty, and immediately after the election, they got to work setting up committees to go around national reconciliation committees and all that, go around the country to try and reconcile their problems. The problems are not reconciled up to this moment from so what they are saying. And they're asking INEC to give them perhaps an extra two weeks, an extra, you know, one month or two months to be able to reconcile this. What they have not been able to do all this while, in all of uh, six, you know, uh, three, three years, three years plus, are they going to do it in one month? They are not. So I INEC has, I mean, has done the right thing by refusing because, I mean, by refusing, and you're going to see how the political parties are going to respond. They'll just go back, knowing that they have limited timeline within which to work to sort out their issue. And they are capable of sorting out these issues. They have not 100%, but I do not think that they should because they want INEC to solve their problems. In the process, INEC creates a problem for itself, which they'll be held responsible for by Nigerians if they have certain challenges that Nigerians no longer expect from them. All right, I'll, I'll come back to you, uh, Ifeda Yo Yani Ura. Um, your, your counterpart in the program tonight has said, you know, the parties have had ample time uh, with which to, uh, uh, to put their house in order. Do you agree with him? Let's also consider the fact that um, the controversial sections of the Electoral Act are still the subject of uh, a court processes. In fact, uh, I'm sure you're aware that um, we've got an appeal court set aside the judgment uh, on section 84, subsection 12, uh, six days ago. And um, we have the Supreme Court, uh, you know, also setting a date to hear um, uh, uh, appeals on this particular electoral act is still in court. Have the parties had ample time from when the, this was signed by the president to when INEC released its timetable on February 26 to be able to conclude it by June 3. Ifedayo uh, Iyanura. Well, let me, if I'm, let, let me say clearly, to the best of my knowledge, many of these political parties have already notified INEC 
for their party primaries. Some fixed late May, why some fixed early June, June 1st to be precise. But you see, what we see at the moment is just the politics, game of politics, the intrigue aspect of it. There are some political actors somewhere. All right, get, because let me tell you straight, it IPAC is a conglomeration of four digital political parties. And it's a take, major stakeholder with INEC. It serves as intermediary between the commission and the other register political parties through the body executive members. Now, because of the relationship between the High Park and INEC, I must tell you expressly that there are some political actors somewhere wanted to hide under the opportunity of the relationship between the IPAC and INEC to now be sending IPAC to INEC to shift this post. Because I am telling you expressly that many of these political parties have already notified INEC for their party primaries respectively. And let me tell you what is playing out. Many of these actors in their respective states, especially the governors, they have promised so many people with just one part, with just one ticket. You will see a governor that promised about 10 people the total ticket of a certain district. You will see a governor that has already promised about 10 people to be a successor in office. Now this new electoral heart has put this kind of precarious politicians to corner. They are in disarray, they are, they are confused. And the only way out now is to have enough time so that they can package their scheme in. So how would they go about this? Is to get on INEC to shift post. There is no way they can speak to INEC from their house. That is why they are trying to look out for a better revenue to reach out to INEC. And I must tell you that a better revenue to reach is this IPAC. Because INEC recognizes IPAC as the major stakeholder. So if I know, and if I know, your, and the commission yeah. never toy with their position on issues, especially if, anything related to electoral process. If if I know, you, uh, um, you've talked about IPAC, okay, but we also have the Arewa Youth Arewa Youth Consultative Forum. Now they are citing uh, insecurity in the northern part of the country, increasing tension across the country, occasioned by banditry and ASU strike, amongst others. How about that? That is not an excuse. The last Anabra governorship election, there was crisis back to back. Before the election, there have been of threat, right, of the properties, yet elections took place there. So if we, if we allow this issue of security threat to have negative effect on the contour of election in Nigeria, I must tell you this, that in Fusho, many of these desperate polit political actors will be causing crisis to get out of Dynek for an election to be postponed. So we should not see that as an excuse. But right. moment, at the moment now, we know the situation we find ourselves in the issue of insecurity. Okay. okay. And, and that notwithstanding, elections were being contorted. Election was conducted in FCT. Election was conducted in Anambra State. We all knew how trades were coming out from different corners prior to Anambra Anambra State, uh, State Government election. Yet, election was, was conducted there. If I know, uh, uh, Yanni Ura, th we, we have to leave it at that. I want to thank you very much. Uh, Ifeda Yanwara is a political analyst, and Achike Chude is also a political analyst. Gentlemen, we've uh, had a very interesting time with you on Plus Politics tonight. Thank you for your time. Hope to have you, you. sometime soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take a short break now, and when we return, we discuss the remaining All Progressives Congress presidential aspirants as several have stepped down. We'll be right back.